Welcome to part seven of this training on causal loop diagrams. In this section, we will present the modeling part of the workshop from the case study, walking you through the process and showing you the final products. For the modeling session, there was a facilitator, note taker, and a modeler creating the model on a laptop using a projector for participants to see the model as it was developed. We started the modeling session with the question that was developed from the reference mode activity. What are the barriers to social connectedness in this neighborhood? We also use the results of the connection circles with the top five ranked connections as an anchor point for the discussion. However, we didn't insist that participants stick to those connections and gave them free reign to let their ideas flow. The start of our model looked like this. Social connectedness is our stock variable in the center. Participants were asked to suggest variables that influenced social connectedness. Many suggestions were provided, mostly drawn from the connection circles. For example, variables suggested included availability of community spaces, personal wellness, and isolation. The facilitator would ask other participants if they agreed with the suggested variable, and if everyone agreed, the facilitator would then try to elucidate the linkages between the variables. For example, the question posed would be, how does availability of community spaces affect social connectedness? Is it directly or does it go through another variable path? If the direct link wasn't obvious, then the group would try to tease out the causal pathway between access to community spaces and social connectedness. In this case, the participants worked out that availability of community spaces creates opportunities to socialize, which in turn affects social connectedness with a positive link, meaning that as opportunities to socialize go up, social connectedness also goes up. And when opportunities to socialize goes down, then social connectedness also goes down. We slowly built the model up from the problem variable. As variables were suggested, they were added to the screen, and we talked through how they were linked to the problem variable. As we did this, more variables were added to the screen and connected through causal links. Sometimes we would examine a particular causal link that was made and make sure that it was a clear causal pathway from a cause to an effect. If everyone couldn't see the direct link, then we would explore other variables in the pathway. Using this Vensum software for the modeling allowed us to easily delete variables and pathways and try new ones as participants thought through the causal links. You can see examples of both negative and positive link polarities in our model. The relationship between Affordable, affordability of housing and transiency of the population is a negative link polarity, meaning they move in opposite directions. Applying our if-then statement, we would say, if affordability goes up, then transiency of the population goes down. And if affordability goes down, the transiency of the population goes up. The causal link or the causal relationship between racism and personal wellness is another neg negative or inverse causal relationship. But the causal relationship between racism and fear of rejection is a positive relationship. Remember, positive doesn't mean it's a good effect. Rather, it means both variables move in the same direction. Applying the if-then statement, we'd say that if racism in the neighborhood goes up, then the fear of rejection also goes up. And if racism goes down, then the fear of rejection also goes down. Over the course of about 45 minutes, the group added variables and causal pathways to build their model out into this map. During the modeling session, we identified two feedback loops both of which were reinforcing loops, meaning that the initial condition is amplified. For example, the participants determined that if connection to community increases, then community identity also increases, and that in turn increases connection to community, and so on in a reinforcing loop. Same thing for isolation and personal wellness. Even though both link polarities are negative, if isolation goes up, then personal wellness goes down, 
and if personal wellness goes down, then isolation goes up. The initial condition of isolation is amplified. We could have spent much more time on developing the causal diagram and built it out further. If we had more time for the modeling, a next step would have been to look for and clarify more feedback loops, including balancing feedback loops. And normally in group modeling, the modelers would spend time fixing up the model after the session, and the group would spend time checking and validating the model. But as a four hour block of time was all we had for the whole workshop, we took the model as is and used it for the next activity, which was the discussion around action ideas. Now that you've learned a little bit about the modeling process and seen the model developed in the case study, take an hour or so and work on your own model. Use the outcomes from your reference mode activity and the connection circle activity to guide your model activity. Don't worry about it being perfect. The goal is to get you thinking about the complex interactions within the system that create patterns of change. If you're interested in creating a causal diagram using a group model building session, you may find it helpful to read Hoffman's book, which is listed in the supportive resources section. Also in the resources section is the agenda, PowerPoint slides, and script that we use for our case study. Again, all the materials from our case study will need to be adapted to fit your context, but can be used as a starting point. In the next video, we will look at the action items that were de developed based on our causal loop diagram.